Oh, bloody hell. Where'd I leave my arc? Anybody see my arc? No. There's my arc. Hey, YouTube. I. So basically, this video here is going to be writing on the coattails of those uh, produced by non stamp collector who is so much better at this than I am. If you have not yet watched the non stamp collector Noah's Ark videos, I highly recommend it. He goes into a lot more details that I won't be going into with this one. So let's start with a little bit of background information. I spent about eight and a half years in the Navy, plus about four years in the Army during my first enlistment. I did three back-to-back -back sea tours in the Navy, uh, culminated again a little more than six years total sea time. Uh, first was on the Vandegrift, then the USS Ford, then the USS Gary. Now all three of these ships are all of her acid parry class guided missile frigates. Now these frigates are 450 feet long, 45 feet wide, and that's important because Noah's Ark is 450 feet long, 45 feet high, 75 feet wide. So basically you're looking at an Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate on its side. Now I'm going to take my little uh, call to visual aid here and we're going to go through a little bit of terminology. The front of the ship is called the bow, the aft end of the ship is called the stern. Looking towards the front of the ship, the left side is going to be port, the right side is going to be starboard. Talk about movement of the ship in the water. Looking at the forward to aft motion, basically this up and down motion is called pitch. The side to side motion like this is called roll. And if you have a twisting motion like this, that's called yaw. Basically, when a ship is going through the water, the longer that the ship is, you have this phenomenon where the front of the ship is affected by one wave and the aft end of the ship is affected by the other. So that when it's going through its pitch and roll motion, it twists in the middle of the water. Even in modern ships where you have a steel hull with an aluminum superstructure, you still have this twisting motion. This is a big problem for a guided missile frigate because the superstructure of the ship is basically one big aluminum box. So the one twists in the middle of the ocean, it tends to crack. Now you look at an Ollie Burke class destroyer, you have a different scenario because you have basically two big engine compartments that are designed for this twist, twisting motion to occur without causing that type of damage to the hull. Now when you look at Noah's Ark, you're looking at a big wooden box floating in the middle of the ocean. And since there's no stabilization for this type of vessel, the roll to the vessel is going to be very, very pronounced. Now, why is that important? This is critical, because the more pitch and roll that you have, the more likelihood that you have of an animal or a person riding the boat of being critically injured. And as our buddy non stamp collector pointed out in his video, there's zero room for error. You can't have an animal getting critically injured. That would be the end of the species. I also have a bit of a conundrum. Because for every pair of animals that you put onto the ark, you also have to provide the food, fresh food, fresh water for those animals. Now, this isn't too much of a problem for a modern Navy ship that can, say, pull into port or be resupplied at sea. That's the entire mission of the, the merchant marines is to provide fresh food, ammunition, fuel for the ship. Say, well, don't have to worry about fuel because Noah's Ark didn't have engines. Well, fair enough. You don't have to have engines, but without engines, you also don't have those silly little things that the engineering department provides for a ship, like electricity, which runs your refrigeration units, which provides you with your fresh food. You also don't have fresh water. And you say, well, isn't it raining for 40 days and 40 nights? Well, yeah, 
but they were on the ark for an entire year. 40 days and 40 nights is not an entire year. They have to get fresh water from someplace. There's not enough room for all the animals. There's not enough room for all the food for all the animals and not enough fresh water with no capacity of making fresh water. That's that silly little thing that those engines do for you. Basically, there's there's two methods that an Oliver Hazard Perry class ship uses to produce fresh water. And I can't go into too much detail about it because I don't know all the details. I was a radar technician, not an engineer. Basically, two methods are you take superheated rods, shove them down straight into the ocean, and you evaporate the fresh water. The other method is a secondary method. It's it's not quite as effective as through reverse osmosis. You force the seawater into selectively uh, permeable membranes and siphon off the fresh H2O from the other side. And of course, neither of these two options are available to Noah's Ark. So you have no fresh food, no fresh water, and not enough room for all the animals. On a large wooden boat that would not be able to handle the tremendous pressures of the large sea waves uh, incumbent in ocean, open ocean travel. I would be able to buy it if you were able to tell me that Noah took uh, repair supplies or was able to put it, pull into port to prepare damage to the ship, but of course that is also not an option, is it? So. Let's look at this type of scenario from the perspective of somebody who sailed on modern Navy ships for extensive periods of time in open ocean in severe weather. You know what a Navy ship does to escape weather? Well, one of two things. If they're insane enough, they can hit the severe weather full on. Confident that with a modern Navy warship, they can be able to sustain the damage. Not so with the Ark. Either that, or they go find a continent that they can use to hide behind. See, I thought some of my shipmates, when they were talking to me, were crazy when they told me that when they were hit with a major storm out in the middle of the water, that they hid behind the Korean Peninsula. Because the waters off the coast of Korea, between Korea and mainland China, are some of the most horrendous waters that you can ever face. I'm talking about massive waves. There's no way that you can hide behind a storm by going to Korea. And I thought, that should must have been some kind of storm. And that's true. Now Noah's Ark has to face the largest storm that a ship could have ever faced with a large wooden box not suitable for open ocean travel with not enough room for all the animals, not enough room for fresh food, no fresh water. Injuries would have been rampant. Seasickness would have been horrible. Animals would have been dying left and right. And of course, as soon as one animal dies, there goes their entire species. And yet, on top of that, you're going to tell me that instead of two pairs of clean animals, you're taking seven pairs of clean animals, as the Bible says. Seven cows, seven goats, seven sheep, or is it 14 cows, 14 goats, 14 sheep? That makes it even worse. It makes it even less room and more food that you have to provide for an entire year. It is simply impossible. Now, of course, reasonably minded people realize that this story is impossible. They also realize the story isn't exactly original. Let's look at a similar story. Now, in the Epic of Gil Gilgamesh, it talks about a flood, possibly relating to an actual flood that happened in the Middle East, where a very important guy built this large wooden boat. And in it, he stuffed his family and his cattle 
and set out to sea. Now this flood actually did happen according to history and the epic of Gilgamesh sort of made a little bit of mythology about something that quite possibly happened when a large and important rich man wanted to save himself and his family and his cattle and preserve his riches. Now when the uh, Hebrew people uh, adopted this story, of course they wanted to make their god to be even bigger and more powerful by making the disaster even bigger. The Epic of Gilgamesh, for example, said that the uh, rains only lasted for a week, uh, seven days, six nights, and it was over. Uh, and it was also very, very local. Uh, the Hebrew people said, no, that isn't good enough. It's Ours is a global flood, 40 days and 40 nights, terrible destruction. And in it, well, only eight people ride in a large wooden box with two of every animal on Earth were the only ones that survived. And a boat that couldn't handle open ocean waters with not enough food or fresh water or room for all the animals. Taken into consideration of a guy that spent six years at sea. I'm not buying it. Once again, much appreciation to my good buddy, uh, non-stamp collector, for his wonderful videos and, of course, all of his research that he did. Uh, once again, if you haven't seen those videos, all two, three of you, I would highly recommend it. Thank you for watching.